All right, good morning, everybody. It's December the 9th. It's cold here in Naples, Florida. It's 59 degrees at the moment. It'll probably get into the mid 60s, which is a very, very cold day for us. Welcome to all of our members from all over the world throughout the United States and Canada. Our meetings are every Wednesday until June 30th. Okay, you must be a member of North of Naples Mug to attend our Zoom meetings. Registration has started on our classes. We've reached about uh, 45, 50% uh, probably what we'll uh, have in total. We expect to have between probably 50 and 70 members per class. So please get registered uh, so we can keep everything updated and keep track of uh, how many we should expect. Um, critical news that we talk about each and every week, uh, please hold off unless you're an experienced user with a lot of confidence in installing Big Sur. Um, Dennis and Jeff are our two techies and they're on top of the issue and they will uh, give me the word um, and I'll let everybody know when they recommend uh, that you uh, go ahead and install. Uh, just to say uh, on one of my computers, I have installed it and so far so good. Our Zoom contact, I just wanna remind everybody is, is Eckert, uh, who's our vice president and uh, in charge of our whole uh, Zoom operation. So if you have any questions uh, on anything related to Zoom, make sure you contact uh, Eckert. Uh, on December the 23rd, which is two weeks from today, it's hard to believe we're that close to Christmas. Uh, we will have Derek Story with us. Derek is a writer, photographer, teacher, and podcaster, very well known in the Apple world very well known in the photography world, has written many, many books, uh, used to uh, teach with lynda.com, probably still does, and is uh, a very knowledgeable uh, photography guy. And he's gonna talk about street photography tips and techniques. That's on December the 23rd. On uh, December the 16th, which is uh, next week, Bob Kennedy will be with us and um, he will go be going with, we sort of are concentrating a little bit on photography this month. And he will talk about holiday photography with the iPhone 12. And um, each and every phone uh, gets better and better and better with photography to the point now where many people are questioning uh, why they have uh, a need for a larger camera. We had some sad news this week. We, uh, we lost a very good friend and a member of 34 years, uh, Gene O'Mara. Gene O'Mara passed away. Uh, he was, I think, somewhere in his mid 90s. A great guy, a great longtime member and board member and a, a very, you know, very strong contributor for, from a time standpoint and so forth uh, to the Naples Mug User Group. And he was at the treasurer for many, many years. Okay, today's meeting, uh, we have uh, Mitch Breyers, our iOS genius. Um, he used to come to us all the way on his private jet from Utah, but now that uh, He's a little older and grain. He's pretty much here in Naples most of the time. And uh, we welcome Mitch and it's all yours. Yes, uh, what I would uh, like you to, uh, what I'd like to share with you, the, I think the question was, how do you really use virtual background for, for Zoom meetings? And uh, uh, Zoom is constantly improving uh, uh, their software, they're adding features. So, some are very attractive. Some represent a lot of fun. And what I like, uh, uh, what I want to do in the next few uh, minutes is use my share screen and show you uh, the virtual background options that Zoom presently offers. Bear with me here. 
and uh, I go into set Zoom settings, and I go into background and filters. And you see uh, that I am using a virtual background and I have a variety of photos and also I believe a few videos that I can use and I change in between. I can, for example, go from that uh, background to uh, another one, I click on this one here and I have a more, more fancy futuristic looking office. But I prefer to show uh, a background from a place where I live, used to live a long time, which is Hilton Head Island. I think a lot of you are aware of uh, uh, the, the possibility of using virtual backgrounds. Some computers have limitations. There are computers with older processors uh, and they, for example, would not allow to show uh, videos. Uh, but uh, the, I think most of them, even the older ones, will show, will allow to show photos as a virtual background. And you can add uh, images or videos by clicking on this plus sign. And if you want to add an image, you can be taken to your photo app and select uh, a photo or even a video from your photo app and import it into uh, this template and then once, it, once this photo or video is, is imported in the future, you can use it by just clicking on it. What uh, Zoom has done very recently, they added uh, some, fun, some fun. And this is that if you click on video filters, uh, you have a variety of, of things. And that one is, I think, uh, particularly important that if you want to uh, be very safe in your Zoom meetings and don't mm -hmm. want to anyone or, or be infected, you can wear a fast mask, a face mask. Also, if you are uh, uh, very, uh, you see, I find it, uh, another one here that I think is, uh, is very nice. You can, uh, you can show, uh, you can look more in a, a car, you may want to wear that. You have, I think, a halo somewhere. If you have accomplished something, uh, then I think you're entitled to wear the halo for a while. So you have all kinds of, of choices uh, in this video filters uh, template to add some fun features uh, to, your, uh, to your Zoom meeting. Also, and I'm now clicking on studio effects, which is still, still a beta version, you can add uh, some eyebrows uh, moustache, beards, and also lip color. For example, I can use, as you can probably see, let me remove the halo. Go to none. But I can, I just enhanced my, my, my eyebrows. I can also show uh, a moustache if I wanted to. And I can also uh, go further down and uh, add some, some color to my lips. So I just wanted to show that to you that uh, Zoom has added these features. Again, they are fun. They easily to be added. Just you have to go into settings, click on background and filters, and then you have all these choices. Okay, Mitch, I think uh, oh. that you were going to cover the uh, audio enhancement as well. Okay. Um, let me go back uh, into settings. Uh, also, before I do that, I, I, I'm... Okay, it, was the, it was the video, um, uh, I, I think, enhancements. You, you are probably wondering, how can I show you all this, all these Zoom features? And in order to do that, you have to go into settings, share screen on, and click on this particular uh, box here, show my Zoom windows to other participants when I'm screen sharing. If you click on that, then you can, when you are hosting a Zoom meeting or using share screen, you can actually demonstrate uh, Zoom features as what I'm doing right now. But I want to go back to, uh, to an issue that Mike uh, Wesniak 
uh, had, he had asked a question a few days ago. Uh, he uses a webcam to uh, uh, get a better picture when he hosts Zoom meetings because the camera in his computer is inadequate, he think, thinks. So he bought the new iPhone 12 with an excellent camera and was very disappointed when he used it as a webcam that the quality of, his, uh, of the pictures was not what he had expected. What he, what he then did after we, he and I talked, he went into settings to video and then under camera, you have a choice. I, I, I just have basically this face, my built-in camera, but since Mike connected his iPhone uh, to his computer, he had another uh, camera to select, which he did. Kenneth Falls, can you please unmute yourself and ask your question? And whoever has the noise in the background, can you please mute your microphone? Hi, Mitch. Just a quick question on the backgrounds, or maybe this is for Eckert, I'm not sure, but when I go into settings and backgrounds, there's nothing there. There are no backgrounds available. It's just a black, just a black space. I'll be an update. Uh, have you updated your uh, uh, Zoom lately? Uh, I believe I have, yes. Not, not in the past two weeks, but I have updated it as the latest it has. The last one it came out with was for... Uh, the latest Apple version, I don't have that, so I didn't do that. That's the only one I didn't do. Yeah. Is that noise coming from me? It's a chainsaw. Is that what you're hearing? Yes, it's a chainsaw. I can't I can't stop that. They're that, walking outside somewhere. That that's fine. Uh Alan, can you unmute yourself and ask one question, please? <laughs> I have to chuckle. Uh, uh Eckert, uh, do you know whether those uh, filter features are available on older uh, operating systems like High Sierra, or do you not know which operating systems they work on? I uh, uh, really don't. Uh, uh, I have checked with a few of our members who had problems uh, using virtual background, but they were at least able to use to use photos. And some of them were not able to use videos because their computers were too old. But I believe if you go all the way back, like seven or eight or nine years, you may not be able to, to get to uh, virtual uh, backgrounds at all. I was also asked in the chat box, how do you get to settings? And there are various ways of doing it. If you, if you are within your Zoom app and you go to the uh, upper menu bar where you see zoom.us, and if you click on it, uh, then you, you have preferences. And if you click on preferences, you should be taken into settings right away. That should happen if you have the latest version of Zoom or one of the latest versions of Zoom. Let's say if your Zoom version is at least not older than three or four or five months. But Zoom is constantly changing uh, their software and their features. But uh, that's the way to get to the template that I showed you settings. Go to zoom.us, click on preferences, and then you should be automatically taken to settings. All right. And let me add that David Ginsburg has put in the chat that not all computers are compatible with backgrounds. You need at least an i7 processor. All right, Mitch, all yours. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay, so welcome everybody. And we're gonna have some Q&A today. And uh, I'm gonna go just to the, to the first slide. Now, um, one of the things that, one of the general questions that I always get or that, or that is uh, so under the surface for all the questions I get is where can I get help for my Apple products and related questions? And so here are the key things. First, you can post a question or problem to our discussion board, our new discussion board at Naples Mug at group groups.io uh, uh, and when you do that in the subject area it is important if you put pound and then the appropriate subject category so if it's just a general thing on apple you would put pound apple if it's on apple tv you would put pound apple I, apple tv and and so on um, and uh that makes it a lot easier for people to just find things when they're on the on the discussion uh, board. Uh, does anybody want to 
add anything to that particular item at this time. Okay. Uh, then the next thing to do for problems is um, you can always search your problem on the internet, on Google. Uh, and um, I use this all the time. Um, and it us I usually get really good answers. I get so many answers. And one of the things I have to do when I'm doing those searches is you can change the time period and I'll change it to less than one year because a lot of these answers will come up and they're five years old and they're on uh, th three software versions down from what you're using or uh, hardware versions as well. So it's a good idea to do that. Um, the next thing is, is you can search YouTube's, uh, you can search YouTube period but you can also search an area in YouTube uh, for Apple support. And I've linked that in the notes. Um, and it's a specific site uh, that I'm going to show. And I will show it in just a few minutes on my phone. Uh, I guess I could do that now. Let me pull this over. Uh, everybody see my phone? Yes. Cheetah? Okay, yes. good. Okay, so um, this area, which I have sort of marked in my text is uh, in my text area. So I'll just go to it. Okay, there's a whole list of uh, this is where you need to go is this Apple support area. It's important. If you type in just Apple support in YouTube, you'll get all kinds of other sites. But if you go to this one, uh, you'll just get Apple's uh, various videos. And uh, there are um, there are there are a number of them. There's like 150 of them. And all of them are anywhere from two to five minutes long. And so that is a, an excellent place to also go. See how this popped up on me again? Okay, so let me go on. Uh, you can also make an appointment at the Genius Bar. They're backlogged down here, but uh, you can usually get in in a week or so. And you can call Apple support. Apple support to me is, is about should be number uh, number uh, four rather than five. Uh, I use Apple support all the time. I was on the phone with him yesterday about an issue that uh, I was having that uh, while I was on with the person, uh, uh, we were able to resolve very quickly. But Apple support, uh, this number is to their technical support. They are very responsive. They're very nice. They'll get back to you. Sometimes they have to elevate it to a senior advisor, but I've had really good success with them. And so those are the ways that you can get help with your Apple products and, and related questions. Can I add an item to this? Yes. There Please. is also a Mac support.apple.com. Okay. It's very useful. Uh, could you put that in the chat area, please? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anybody else have comments on ways you can get help? Uh, Maureen, I think I just posted something about Apple support was a subscription only Apple care. That's no longer the case. Anybody can pretty much get support from Apple, Apple directly. Yeah, regardless I think they're, of, they're very friendly now. Yeah, regardless of any age of your computer, I believe. Yeah. I talked to Tim about that and he loosened up things for us. Oh, we appreciate it. Good. Any other helpful hints? Okay, moving on. Uh, I don't have this as a question, but I want to go over it now. And I'd like uh, Jerry King to... Uh, unmute himself and ask his question and explain what's going on. But he was having trouble 
uh, starting his iPhone 8 after he powered it down. And so Jerry, if you could unmute yourself and... Um, okay, can you hear yes. me? Yes, yes, we can. I have an iPhone 8 and it's uh, now running the iOS 14.2. On the right side button is what I call the reset button. If I press it and hold it, I get a, uh, and hold it, I get a window that says slide to power off. If I do that, my iPhone will never turn back on unless I plug it into a power adapter. Okay, now, have you tried holding that button in for a while when you're trying to start it up? I'll try that. I thought I had, had done that, I, but I, I will do that and let the, the group know through the chat. Okay, and uh, anybody else want to weigh in on that? Yes, it happened to me once earlier. And that for a while seems to be up to a minute or so sometimes. Yeah, I've had the same reaction. Yeah, where you have to hold that button in for a long time. I'll try that right now and I will send a chat back to the group if it works. Thank you. Oh, okay, great. Thanks nice hearing Jerry. your voice, Jerry. It's great, great to hear you. Um, I want to mention this. I just had a problem yesterday. I, I mentioned that I called Apple support. Uh, my wife has an iPhone 12 and uh, noticed that when, and she has a, a mag case for it. And uh, we have three different charging pads in our home. Uh, none of them are Apple, but all of them work fine. And I noticed that when I put my phone on there and my uh, phone uh, has a, uh, it doesn't even have an Apple uh, mag case. And in fact, is it has a, a case that has a credit card behind it. I can land on any of those charging pads and it'll start to charge. Well, hers wouldn't charge. Um, I took the case off and it wouldn't charge. So I thought, well, something's definitely wrong with this phone. And uh, I got them on the line while they were on the line and the gal was about ready to put me on hold, I decided to do a hard reset on her phone and that corrected the problem. Uh, once again, the hard reset, which is the up, that, up volume, down volume, then hold the volume on the, or the button on the right and until the Apple logo appears, uh, corrects many, many, many problems. And it corrected this one. Any comments on that? Okay, moving right along. Looks like Jerry might have been successful. Good, that's great news. Okay, uh, I had some questions related to how do you block calls and emails? And I wanted to uh, demonstrate that on my phone. So let me get the phone over here. By the way, Nick, uh, we have 71 participants today, which is uh, quite, a, quite a nice number. Must be you. Oh, that, that is great. That is great. Thank you, George. Um, OK, so how do you block uh, calls, uh, emails? And uh, well, I'm gonna, so I'm going to pull up my calls, my phone. And I'll pull up recent history and I'll see about uh, blocking one. Okay, so here's one from uh, Hamilton, Georgia, which I know is some kind of political call that did not come through, but it, it did show in my recent call. So you hit on the I right here. And when you do that, this comes up. And at the bottom of this, it will say, block this call. And when, I, when you hit block this call, it will block everything, messages, calls, um, and emails if they had an email address in, in, in here. So <clears throat> uh, if I hit block this call, block this call, 
This comes up and you hit yes, I want to block it. And now it's blocked. Okay. And if I hit unblock, I can I can unblock it right there. Any questions on that? Okay, so now uh, I want to go to while we're on while we're on that subject, I want to go into <clears throat> and search for blocked. Well, it's showing a bunch of websites, but it's not. Oh, maybe it's going to show up right here. Yes. Okay, so it takes you into the phone settings, and you go down here and it shows blocked contacts. So if you go there, you can see all these numbers that I've blocked in the past. And you can unblock them if you want to. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of them there that I've, a lot, a lot of them that I've blocked. So that's how to do that. Uh, and if you want to unblock one, like here's William Sonoma, if I want to unblock it, I go right here. And um, I think I can. Uh, I think I can. There should have been an unblock here. Blocked. I think I need to go to the contact and then you go into contact into the contact and um, you can unblock it. That's where they all are. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to go to mail. And uh, I'm going to go to oh, this is one I want to do right here. Uh, so um, Let me get a jump one. I want to get one. Okay, so here's one from Ski Ship, which I never use, never have used them. But um, and now since I'm not skiing anymore, I really don't need this. So when I open up the email, there's a couple ways you can do this. Now one way is to hit this unsubscribe, and that's problematic because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And if it's not from a reliable source like Costco or Walmart or something like that, uh, what it does is when you hit the unsubscribe, it tells them that they got a live one on the wire and they'll send your email to a bunch of people you don't want to have it. Uh, so I suggest you not use this. I never use it anymore. But what instead I do is you tap on the sender, which is ship skis, which I'm gonna do it comes blue and then I tap on it again and this comes up. Okay. And it says block this contact. Now they're actually not a contact, but they create a contact real quick in the process of blocking them. So I hit block this contact block and we're done. That's the best way to block email. Anybody have any additions to what I've said about blocking calls or blocking email? Now, one more thing on blocking calls. Uh, if you go to the phone, and we've talked about this before in settings, this is settings, we'll go down to the phone. You can go to uh, silence unknown calls. Now, if you look at that and look at what it says, it says calls from unknown numbers, which means they're not in your phone book, will be silenced. They'll be sent to voicemail if they leave a message and will display on the recent call list. Okay. Uh, incoming calls will continue to ring from people in your contacts, recent outgoing calls, uh, and series suggestions. So I usually leave this on. Now, if I call somebody, like let's say I'm gonna have a plumber out, which I am, 
Uh, and I know he's going to be calling me from a cell phone or some number that is not in my contacts. I'll put, I'll, I'll go in here and I'll turn this off for a day or so until he calls until, so I'll get those junk calls coming in, but then I'll turn it right back on. And they do leave a message. I mean, if you've got this on, if it's something important, it's somebody that's important, they'll leave a message. And even some of the junk ones will leave a message. Oh, your warranty needs to be extended warranty on your car needs to be renewed. And it's a car that I sold five years ago. Uh, they've left messages, uh, but not many of them do. So that is an excellent way to, to filter out your calls. And um, now I want to talk about deleting text messages. And I know Alan, uh, his wife had a problem with this and I sent her a video and I sent her a, an article and happily she uh, texted me late last night and said uh, that the video following the steps in the video uh, absolutely got rid of the text message that she was having trouble deleting. So I'll go into messages real quick and show you this. So um, if I go down to, uh, let's go down to William Sonoma. Now I can delete a message by just going like this and I can delete it. Um, I, I, that deletes the whole conversation. Uh, and it all, I think it tells, ask me if I want to do that. And it says, would you like to delete this conversation? This conversation will be deleted from all of your devices. Okay. So I could do that to delete the entire conversation. I want to cancel that and I'll go into the message. So if I want to delete this particular message, I just hold on to the bottom one. I'm holding my finger on it. And when I do this, this more comes up and I hit on the three dots. And then a check mark appears right here. Okay. Uh, and then let's say I want to get this, do this one as well. You can't, I don't think you can, oh yeah, you can see it right there. There's a little circle, you check it. So I check that one. Oh, check a couple of these I don't need. Okay. And Black Friday's over. Okay. Now I, I've selected the ones I want to delete and I just, Go down here. Let's just see if there's any more. Yeah, there are plenty more. Okay. So I just took off the ones I wanted to delete when I did that. So let's delete a few. Okay. Now I'm going to delete these. Hit on the garbage can. Delete seven messages. Delete it. Okay. Now I go back out. And um, William Sonoma will still be in here somewhere. Uh, probably down further now because I deleted the uh, more recent ones, but they are, they will be here. Uh, we can search for them. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Well, I don't see it, but I know that they're there. I know that if I wanted to text William Sonoma, they would, if they would be there because I did not delete the entire string. Um, so the other thing, uh, let's just see, hi, Apple support. This is Apple support. Yeah, okay. Well, the other thing you can do, let me go to Apple support again. Uh, hi, this is Apple support. Okay, so if I hit on, this right up here, which would usually be somebody's phone number. If I hit on that, it'll say information. Uh, and I thought I could delete from here, but apparently you can't delete from here. Uh, maybe I ought to try one with a telephone number and see if that works. Hold on a minute. Let's try this one, which is a friend of mine. And I hit on this. And um, 
hide alerts. Uh, I could hit hide alerts. I think hide alerts might might hide anything that he sends me. Um, so that's basically a rundown of deleting text messages. Any questions there? Yes. Yes. If I delete, if I delete a text message on my iPhone, will that, uh, I'm sorry, not delete it, but if I um, cancel them, stop them from coming, block them, uh, will it do so for my computer as well? All my devices? It'll do it for all your devices if all of them are set up with the same Apple ID and, and settings. And in the chat area, uh, we have posted, it's the first chat item, uh, Cheetah, uh, Cheetah after, uh, actually um, posted it for me because we couldn't figure out why I couldn't post it. What well, was so long that, uh, um, was that the one on, yeah, that yes. was the one on text messages. Uh, it was so long we had to do it in several segments. So if you read through that, it will tell you exactly what you need to do on each device. And the only bugaboo is uh, on the phone, if you go into messages, so let me go back in here and go into, into the message area. And uh, I'm not gonna hit on this, but send receive will show what, what addresses and phone numbers can send and receive uh, email or text messages to me. And only an, only an Apple uh, uh, email address will work, uh, but your phone number will work. And so those would be listed there. And then um, this contact, you can share the, your name and, and your photo to contacts that you're sending things to. Uh, you can show a photo. Um, you can determine how many lines of text you want to see on your phone. You can send a read receipt. I always send them. A lot of people don't like to do that. You can send as a SMS, which would send as an SMX when iMessaging is unavailable. Um, and then uh, this is important. This group, uh, uh, this um, I think it's group messaging. No, no, no. Mess you can get message count. You can get a subject field, block contacts. Uh, oh yeah, filter unknown senders. Let me show you this once. Uh, uh, it doesn't show, but uh, this I found out was not on on my iPad, because I couldn't understand what the difference was. And I'll show you what that is, is if we go into messages, you'll notice there's three dots up here at the top. And that's the filter, okay? I'm sorry, there's a filter at the top. And if I hit that filter, when you've got that turned on, it'll segment your your messages. So all message, I can see all messages. I can just see messages from known senders, or I can just see messages from unknown senders. So if I hit messages from unknown senders, you can see all these are like from the bank and and uh, and so on. So, uh, but but none of them are going to be in my contacts. Okay. Uh, so if I go back to the filter, I should just say, I, I just want known senders, then it's going to be known, just known senders. Okay. And there's that Williams-Sonoma. There they are again. So I didn't delete them completely. I just deleted the, uh, but I could delete that whole string. I'll delete that. And that just, it doesn't delete the contact. It just deletes the conversations, all of them. So they're gone. Um, so the filter thing, I didn't have turned on on my iPad because I, but now it's turned on and, and it's working fine. I like this to be on just all. 
Does that answer your question? Can, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not the same person who asked the question moment ago. Okay, well, go ahead. I'm asking a couple of things, Mitch, uh, thanks for your, all your help. Is first of all, um, how do I get to filters in messages again? I'm, um, okay, um, if you're in, if I think it has to be turned on in settings. I'm not sure. It might be on by default in, on the right. phone. So I go to, so I'm in settings. And uh, you go to, go to messages. Messages, done that. Okay, good. And I, I think it's on by default because I'm, oh yeah, no. Uh, filter unknown senders. Mitch. Yes. It's not on by default. You have to go into settings to set, put it on. Yeah. So, and there it is. Filter unknown center, uh, unknown center, senders okay. right okay. here. But then right, you showed, but then you right showed, there. Yes, I, I did that. But then you showed uh, three dots and. Okay. So then when you go to your, your, your text message area, the three dots is not what I wanted to show. The three dots is other things. Right, open up. Um, Open up messages. I see. And there's so three. you open up messages and you should see filters if it's turned on. I see that. Okay. And when you hit filters, then you have three choices. I see. Okay. Okay. And you can do the same thing on the iPad. Now I did find out and because I went through this article and I went through all my devices. Uh, I find out, I find that the computer my computer, even though I'm on the same Wi-Fi and everything, it doesn't seem as responsive as my iPad and my iPhone in terms of updating. Uh, also, on the computer, you do not have a choice to filter anything. Um, I looked through the settings and could not find it. So it's a little slightly different on messaging on the, um, and that would be on, uh, uh, the latest iOS. What's it called? Big Sur? Get all these names mixed up. Is it Big Sur? Big Sur. Yeah, Big Sur. That's what I'm using. Um, so does that answer your question? Yeah, it, did. it was quite helpful. Uh, but I'm in messages uh, right now, and I just got a message uh, from my dentist. Uh, and it shows as an unknown phone number I want to put it in, I want to put this number that they're using into my contacts so that I will see any subsequent messages coming in from my dentist using this number. You um, ought to be able to go over here and hit yeah. this arrow. Yeah, did that. And it should say. Just. Uh, then you hit the arrow, that, that, so I've got one here. So then you hit the arrow up here. Yeah, I did. Info. Yeah. And it's not allowing you to do that. Right. Um, let me see. Info call, send location. Uh, no, there it is. Hit info again. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. And then create new contact. Yeah. And then when you hit that, you'll have to name them and so on. Or you can, you know, you can add it to an existing contact. Gotcha. That works. Okay. okay great. That's good. Thank you so much. Any, uh -huh. Any other questions on that? Okay. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the control center. Nobody had a real question about this, but um, it's something that I use periodically. And yes, I have a question about text messages. Yes. How can I, how can I print a message from my phone? This um, is so yeah, I think you can, let me just see, uh, let me just pull one up here. Uh, okay, here's one. And I think if I hold down on this and go more, uh, no, oh, you can, you, uh, you I can't. think, no, you can. No, I saw a video on this that you could. Okay. Um, I, I, but I can't tell you how to do it right now. Uh, but I did, I just saw a video this morning and said how to print up 
how to print uh, a text message. Um, let me see. Let's just try our handy dandy. Uh... I tried emailing it to myself, but somehow it didn't get to my emails. Okay, hold on one second. Um, how to print a text message from iPhone. How to print a text message from iPhone. Two ways to print them. Um, uh, you might want to, I don't want to take a lot of time to go through this, but you might want to read through this and see if it helps. Okay. Google that and see if it helps. I did, and I also saw a video, so. Um, it seems to me, me you just hard press it down and it gives you an option to do that. No, it doesn't do that. But here is how to print text messages on your phone. There's 790,000 views on that. I, I play that, but it, it infringes right. on copyright I, I, stuff. I, that's fine. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Um, you, can, you can also purchase the iMazing app, which will allow you to print them and do a, a whole bunch of other stuff that you really would want to do with the apps and content on your phone. iMazing, look it up. Uh, we have a video of it. Um, uh, the gentleman who produced it, his company, he did a presentation for us. It's a wonderful app. If you don't have it right now, you should. It is great. I don't use it. I, I really have to start using it some more. Uh, I've used it a little bit, but it is a great app. I know that Sheeta and um, Me. Eckert use it. Eckert and, and George. George use it quite a bit. Okay, so let me go to Control Center. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but on Control Center on iOS 10 or on iPhone 10 and above, I know it's a it's slide down from the upper left corner like that. I think from some of the older phones, it's a slide up from the bottom. And here's mine. Uh, this is lit up because I'm sharing my screen. Here is the... Uh, uh, notification center. Here's a video that I was watching. Um, and here you can adjust the brightness of the screen. Um, this is the flashlight. These are timer type things, alarm clocks and timers and so on. This is a calculator. I use the calculator periodically and I find it really handy that it's right here. Uh, so that's one I have there. I don't use this one. This is the Apple TV controller. I should use that more often. Uh, I could have used that the other day. Uh, for some reason, all of a sudden, Hulu wanted my uh, password again, and it presented a problem. But uh, could have used that. This is the night day. This is the uh, black and and. Uh, and daytime dark mode, view. dark mode. Yeah, dark mode. Yeah. So if I hit that, it'll change to dark mode at the top. And if I turn it off, it's it's the light mode. Um, this is a note. Quick, take a quick note. I don't use that. I do use this, and this is the uh, scanner for those funny-looking uh, square bars you see all over. Um, QR and, codes. QR codes. Yeah. And I was just talking to uh, maybe George yesterday, and I'll, some restaurants are now uh, bringing up this, this QR code. Is that what they call it, Sheeta? Yes. Okay. A, a lot of restaurants now are putting that on your on your check, and so you can just sit there and scan it, and it pops up on your phone, and it says you want to leave a fifteen, an eighteen, a twenty percent tip. You hit on whatever you want, and um, and then you pay it immediately with your Apple card or whatever card you have in your phone. And 
to me, that's really slick. And I can't wait until just about all restaurants have that. It'll probably be a few years. But I know that Outback and uh, that whole chain, which is Fleming's, Outback, uh, Bonefish, and Carabas, they all have it. And who, where did you experience it, George? No, it's everywhere now. PF Chains, everybody's doing it. Okay, good. And you can uh, read them. You can also read their menus with these uh, codes. Yes, exactly. So this is really slick because it, you know, handing that credit card to somebody and going in the back room, you don't know what they're doing with your credit card. Plus, with the uh, virus going around, you know, every time I get my credit card back, I'm getting my sanitizer out, sanitizing my credit card. So anyhow, I do use this more often. This is instant record the screen. It's the size of the print. Uh, the, I think this is your file area. Wallet. wallet. Oh, your, your wallet. Uh, wallet. Uh, excuse me. That's your wallet. This is uh, record. This is your home kit. Not sure what this one is. Maybe this is another record. Oh, this is a another record. I'm not sure. Yeah, of, this of is a I sleep. Think. This is a sleep mode, and where all these are and where you get them. But so I, I don't use all of them, but I do use several. But where you get them is if you go into settings and you go into um, into control center right here underneath general. Wayne Merch just said that that was health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. That was health. Uh, or no, that was sound recognition. Sound recognition. Yes, sound recognition. Okay. okay. So uh, you can, uh, so if I don't want sound recognition, I can take that out um, by just hitting the minus sign, remove. Uh, see if there's anything else I want to remove. Um, I'll remove the notes. I never use that one from here. Um, and I can remove a couple of uh, one of these timers. They I'll remove the uh, alarm. Okay, um, so I removed removed a few, and and these are the ones that I could add. Notice these are the ones I just removed. So I could add music. Uh, I could add low power mode, hearing. Um, do not disturb while driving. So there's a lot of things you can do in this control center and I find it very good. Okay, we got about 10 minutes left and we move on. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get questions about um, what phone should I buy and what size should I get? Well, this is the current layout of phones that are offered. You have the SE, uh, which is the small one that came out earlier in the year. Then you have the um, XR, you have the 11, you have the 12, uh, the big one and the small one, and you have the 12 Pro, uh, again, the, the Pro and the Pro Max. So these are the starting prices. Um, a lot of these entry level ones come with uh, 64 gigabytes of memory and to go to 128 costs another $50 or so. Uh, uh, on the, on, I know on the 12 series and maybe even on the 11 series, if you jump up 100 on the, um, uh, on the size, the um, uh, 100 megabytes on the size or gigabytes on the size, um, the gigabytes or megabytes? I'm not sure. Gigabytes. Um, gigabytes. Okay. It, it, it's generally about a hundred dollar increase in price. So how do you know what to get? And that's what I want to talk about in terms of size, in terms of which phone you want. I have friends of mine, all they're interested in doing is making telephone calls, sending some emails and looking something up every once in a while. And they're not into this stuff at all. They don't, they could, they really don't care much about the camera. So they're, they're really happy with one of these two right here. Particularly the, uh, 
one of these two, yeah, right here. Uh, I know I got a friend of mine, I got the RX and he's happy, happy as can be with it. Now me, I mean, I want to be in this category here. Uh, I just want the additional features, the additional power, the chip sizes are different. These chips are the newer chips on, all, on these four. These are the older chips as you go down the line. It's personal preference, personal preference. Uh, if you're coming from an iPhone 6, any of these are going to be better than what you have. Um, so you need to figure out, you know, which phone you want first and, 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 and what is your budget. And then the next thing is, well, what size memory should I really get? And a good indication of that is how much memory are, is, are you using in your current phone? So if I go into my phone and go under general and go under about uh, general and about one of the things that it tells me is that this phone is a 128 gigabyte phone that's the smallest iphone 12 uh, that you can get and um I used to get 256. The 12 Pros come in 512 as well. Uh, and um, again, it's about $100 more if you go up from, from 128 to 256. Uh, and so why would I want 256 when I have available almost 80 gigabytes of this 128? So there's just no reason for me to do that. And look, I've got 618 videos. These are all videos on my phone that are, uh, I think, saved in the cloud now. I know my 21,000 pictures are saved in the cloud. I don't save them on my phone at all. So these don't take up that much space. Uh, I do have a lot of apps, but still I've got plenty of room. Now, how much of a safety room should you have? And they say you should have maybe 25, 30 gigabytes of uh, spare room. And why do you, so if I was pushing a hundred, uh, I'd, I'd still be okay. But if I was pushing a hundred here, a hundred left, or I mean 30 left, uh, I might want to jump up to the next level. The reason being is that when you do an up, upgrade, it takes more memory to do the upgrade. The process in which it does it, uh, they use more. And so uh, you don't want to push this limit. You want to have a buffer. And I'd say a good buffer is maybe 30 gigabytes. Do you, do you agree with that, Sheeta? I do. OK. So this is the first indicator of what size you should get. And I used to get 256. And I thought, why am I wasting the money? when I started looking at this. So the last uh, two or three phones, I've gotten the 128. Um, now, same thing. So that takes care of that. Now, the, the next slide I have is the same thing on the iPad. Almost out of time, but it's, it's the same basic thing. Here's the basic iPad lineup that they have now. Here's the mini which is the real small one. Here is the regular iPad that's new, the economy version, I'd call it. Then there's the iPad Air, uh, which is new, and it has the A14 chip, which is important. So this is a really, uh, to me, this is a really good uh, value if you want to keep one for a long time and you're going to use it for a lot of things. Uh, it might be worth the extra money to get this one. The Pro uh, probably don't need that unless you're going to really doing a lot of a, a lot of different things. It does do a few more things than this one, uh, but again, you're going to have to investigate that. And this chart goes on, and you can compare a lot of features between them. Uh, and again, the same thing for the memory. Uh, these come in smaller, I think 64 and 128, and then 
This one comes in, I think, 64, 128, and 256. This one comes in uh, 128, 256, 512, and one terabyte. I have 212 in mind because I, and the reason I do, and the reason I'm using more storage is because I download some movies as, it, as in theater movies uh, on my iPad. I uh, don't need them as much anymore, but I used to keep 10 or 12 of them on there and they're anywhere from three to five gigabytes a piece. So when I was on a plane, I could pull up the video and watch it on my iPad. Um, so uh, I still have a lot, I probably still have a, a, a lot, I know I do have a lot of space left. In fact, as I can tell you real quick how much I have left. Um, I have 128 gigabytes uh, available out of 256. So I've used about half. Um, so that's a little bit of a rundown on the iPad lineup and, and a little guidance on which one you might want to select. Again, it's an individual preference. I just had a neighbor who his wife had an iPad one or two, one of the first ones stopped working and he opted for this one and he got it at Costco on sale and they sold him the Apple Care right there and everything. And so uh, I think he had some problems setting it up and he called Apple and they helped him out. Okay. Any questions on that? Uh, yes, James Corsica, could you please unmute yourself and ask your question? Hi, Mitch. Um, Hi, I recently went through a period where my cable and my internet were out for five days and so my Wi-Fi uh, iPad, I had to use through my phone hotspot. So I'm considering getting a new iPad with a cellular connection. Can you tell me roughly what that adds to my Verizon bill if I put a, uh, uh, a cellular I, iPad on it? I think it's $20. Uh, I, I, I don't have Verizon, I have AT&T. Uh -huh. And I believe it's twenty dollars for an iPad and ten dollars for a watch. Uh, uh -huh. But uh, so I, it's a flat a flat rate every month. Okay. Yes, and, and they do take the data out of your plan, but I have an unlimited plan, and I don't I don't I don't even come close to where they start throttling you down. Right. The the, the data for the uh, cellular iPads it's separate. It's Oh, is it? It can be separate, yes. I, I don't it, know can, you, it can be separate. Yeah, yeah, For me, I think it's mine are all bundled. Yeah, even because uh, I, ha I have AT&T, and even though I had cellular for a iPad, it was still separate. Okay. Can you make calls with a cellular iPad? If uh, you, if, go ahead, Mitch, I'm sorry. Yes, you can. What, why can't he just uh, use his uh, iPhone as a hotspot on his iPad? I did, I did, but it, it depends so much on the strength of the uh, of the cellular signal uh, that I found that it was very, very, very slow, and so that's why I'm considering going to a cellular iPad so that the connection is direct. Did you have something to add to that, Sheena? You started to talk. No, go ahead. It is uh, twelve forty-six. Please wrap it up. That's, that's really all I, uh, I have. I hope everybody enjoyed this. And uh, sorry we had the technical difficulties with, uh, uh, with my iPhone and mirroring the iPhone, but I, we got through it. And so that's all. Thank you very much, Mitch. Uh, Thanks, Mitch. Yeah, thank you. Is everybody much. unmuted? Thanks, Mitch. Yeah. Thank you, Mitch. Great job. Thank, thank you. Yeah, you're quite welcome. I appreciate all the questions that people emailed me and uh, uh, please continue to do that and just give me a little time a day or two to work on before the meeting. Everyone stay well and thank you for attending. And if you get a chance, please download the chat or George, will you send that out? It's got some, yeah, the, uh, the chat will come out with the video within the next two to three days. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
Have a great week.